What's up friends, today we are starting a brand new build. And yes, yes, I know the race board is not entirely done yet, but I'm still working on that in the background. So expect another video on that fairly shortly. Today we are starting a brand new DIY build centered around the Onzra TKP trucks. So let's jump right into it. You make my heart beat, beat super fast. In this video, I've got a couple goals. The first of those is to go over all of the parts that I intend to use on this build. Now, uh, I can already see a couple issues that we may have, so we're gonna go through component by component and talk about them, and um, we're also going to go ahead and throw the trucks onto the deck today and see if we can get the belt drive configured. If not, we'll save that for another video. But today, we're laying out the build and seeing what it all is about. All right, so in this video, we have a couple of tasks to complete. And the first of those is going over all of the components and letting you guys know what each of them is. And uh, I already have a couple issues that I think might pop up with compatibility on some of these parts. So this may not be the final parts list. And in fact, this is actually phase one of this build. Um, similar to the race board, I am doing a second phase of this project where I upgrade from belt drive to the Lin Power. Uh, 4.3 gear drive. So um, first stage we going belt drive on the Onzra TKP trucks which are kind of the reason this build started. Onzra reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to check out the TKP trucks and I was like sure I've never tried TKPs before and I think that will be awesome. So we've got the Onzra TKPs here. They are pretty cool looking trucks in my opinion. Um, they seem to be made quite well all fully CNC machined aluminum and they are quite tall <laughs> which oddly enough actually works out perfectly for the deck that I have because the deck that I have is extra thick so the extra height of the base plates will not be a problem for this build. Now the main thing everyone wants to know about usually is the power of the board so what are we using for the speed controller? Well I actually have a special D75 ESC from Maker X, and this is a VESC based uh, speed controller. As most of you will know, the DIY community loves these things, and um, this is special because it was first batch, and that was when they were able to use 75 volt, 140 amp MOSFETs, and that is basically what gives you the power to the motor. So I should be able to easily do 130 amps off this thing, and uh, should be awesome. Um, looking forward to using this ESC and uh, it's even got a built-in power button, which is super convenient. Now, connected to the ESC, I will have a Robogochi Pro, which, let me grab it, is a small data logger, and it's in this bag here. But basically, this is the alternative to a Meter Pro, which is another data logger module. And, uh, this is a beta, so I'm looking forward to testing that out on this build. And uh, then connected to the ESC, we have two Flipsky 6374 motors at 190 kV. And these are just good old reliable. Honestly, Flipsky motors are the best bang for the buck right now. Um, they give you great power and reliability. And I think that's all we're gonna need for that. I'm not sure if we'll upgrade to 6384s eventually if I run into heat issues or possibly a different brand of motor. Not 100% sure yet, but that's the plan for right now. Now, the next thing to talk about is these epic looking wheels. Now, I have been a fan of Newbie for quite a while, and these are, man, these are Newbie's Impaler rims, but these are a one of four bronze color for the impaler rims. And these rims are from um, Ram Boards, which is an Australian company. So I got one of the four sets and they are intended to go on this build. This is one of the parts where you might have a problem fitting them onto the axles of those Onzra TKPs. So we're gonna try our best um, and we'll see what happens. On those wheels, we will have SKP seven inch tires and I've heard nothing but great things about these tires. They also stretch well and if you couldn't tell, these are quite wide wheels and uh, these tires will stretch well to fit that space and give it a nice stanced look. So 
yeah, I'm looking forward to using these tires. I've not used them before. Um, I've recently been riding seven inch tires on the uh, Atlas Pro and I've really liked that size. So looking forward to trying these out for a street board. Right now, I have a set of 60 tooth Meepo pulleys that actually came with my, um, my tubeless wheels that I'm not using because they're on a gear drive. So I'm gonna try throwing these on here first and see if they fit. I might have to take this bearing out, which may prove to be difficult, not sure. Um, and yeah, so this will be a belt drive from the start and these belt drives are built into the Onzra TKP trucks with these motor mounts. So uh, we'll be mounting those up there. And let's see, that's most of the components talked about. Uh, the other thing, obviously you need something to control the board and I intend to use a Flipsky VX4, except my VX4 that is uh, on my board up here somewhere, um, the potentiometer for the thumb wheel is dead. So I went and got a special, very expensive, <laughs> $65 thumb wheel from Derelict Robot Industries and I'm going to be having a stream. Why are you tracking the wheel? This is not an eyeball. I'm going to be doing a stream designing the enclosure uh, slash like remote case to use this thumb wheel on the VX4. And I think that'll be super cool. So if you're interested in CAD or engineering or whatever, come tune into that stream, get subscribed for that and um, that'll be really cool. We'll have a one of two, I believe, <laughs> uh, Flipsky VX4 with that fancy high quality thumb wheel. Now, I think that's almost everything. The final thing will be the battery. And of course, uh, we'll be going with Molly Cell P42A in a 14S 6P configuration. And yeah, that's a pretty big battery. I'm hoping to get around 30 miles of pretty hard riding. Uh, we'll see if I can manage that, not sure might be closer to 25, but um, either way, it's gonna give me some great performance at 6P. There'll be plenty for this controller. And yeah, so that's all the electronic and mechanical components. And then we have two big things in the back here that you're probably wondering about. And one of these is this absolutely gorgeous looking forged carbon fiber enclosure. And this is from Big Ben Enclosures, um, which he is not making any more of this. This was his last carbon fiber hummy enclosure. So yeah, pretty stoked about this one. Um, I think this just looks super awesome and it's going to be on, fastened to the bottom of the enclosure with some easy lock stainless steel inserts. And you can see this has got plenty of room for that 14S 6P battery. And uh, it's incredibly strong. This thing is a little bit flexible, of course, because the Hummy deck flexes a little bit, but very strong. So stoked about this one. Um, and I'm pretty stoked to have a board that's got some unique parts on it. Now we got one final component here, which is the deck. And this is a deck from uh, someone called John Hummy. Uh, or John Humana, I think, I can't remember. But basically this is a carbon fiber composite deck and it's got a couple layers of carbon fiber in it and the rest is uh, maple. So this thing is awesome. This is my favorite deck. If you guys have seen any of my wheel test videos, my um, board that I use for that is the same deck. You might recognize the side profile. Um, it's got a tiny bit of flex and it's got a cutout on the inside for extra cell space. So, yep, got this one. And I'm pretty happy to use another one of these decks and to bring another Hummy build into the world. Now, we've got, I think that will be all of the components. So, Let's just go ahead and start assembling. Uh, I'm gonna mount up the trucks onto the deck first, and then we'll put the, uh, the belt drive mounts on, mount up the motors, and see if there's any chance that these wheels are gonna work on this board. All right, so first thing is going to be attaching the trucks. And fortunately, these trucks work perfectly on the Hummy and sit right into the 
deck cutouts. Now, I actually am quite limited on <laughs> what I have in terms of hardware right now. So we're going to be using M5 by 40 uh, screws, which are quite a bit longer than they need to be, but they will do the job for now until I get some shorter hardware. And just gotta go ahead and grab some M5 lock nuts and some washers, and then we'll get these attached. All right, now that we've got the trucks attached to the deck, it'll be much easier to attach the motor mounts. It's got those here. And of course, there's only one angle to put these at, so <laughs> we will be putting them at that angle. And we just gotta get some screws out of here. There's a lot of hardware that comes with these trucks and no instructions, so Guess I just have to figure out which ones are the correct ones. Shouldn't be too hard. Looks like these are gonna be the M4 ones that go like that. Yep. One. Actually, these look like M5. Two. Three. And we've got some big M5 nuts for those ones. There we go. Obviously you don't need to do this with a power tool. You can easily do this with a Allen wrench, but uh, we have it, so might as well. All right, that's nice and tight. And so is this one. All right, so there's one motor mount on. Let's flip it over and do the other one. Three more screws. Now, actually, before we tighten this down, it might be a good idea to put the, I wonder if I can put these on and attach the cross guard so we can tell yeah, let's put the cross guards on first so we can make sure that the mounts are aligned. So cross guards are going to be attached with some of these other screws, probably these small ones. Oh, and they're attached from the other side. So we got crossbar guard we're just going to go ahead and insert these screws here. These ones definitely should have some blue Loctite, so gotta grab that real quick. All right, we're gonna get some blue Loctite on these guard rails. So we got some blue Loctite 243 here, semi-permanent, of course. Um, no need to have red on these. So we'll go ahead and put a little bead on there. And Tighten her in. Give these a good tighten down. These look to be M3 by maybe eight screws. We'll just hang this on here while we do the other side. Now we need this one, two more screws. Go. All right, now we can go ahead and put the three more plate mounting screws on. Oh, well not all the way though, cause we wanna, oh wait, actually, let's see these. Okay, these just fit in between. Let's, let's get those on before I do anything else. These are gonna be Presumably, 
the longer screws. I don't know. I guess you could put either the shorter ones or the longer ones here. I feel like these ones should have a little bit more thread engagement, so we're gonna put the long ones. And for these, let's pre-apply some Loctite into the holes. Loctite in here. Go ahead and screw that in by hand. And I'm getting Loctite all over the place on this other mount. Oh well. All right, so there's one. Now let's get the other two on to keep it centered. All right, so I figured it out. Um, I put in these screws incorrectly. These are supposed to be the screws for the uh, belt guards. So these M3 by eights are used later. Instead, these should be the M3 by 12s. So we've got four M3 by 12s and I put two of the M3 by 12s in the uh, crossbars already. So we'll have to take these this first set out and replace them with the M3 by 20. Sorry, M4 by 20, I keep saying M3. These are M4 bolts. So M4 by 12 goes here. That's one out of four. All right, so I went ahead and tightened down all of the six screws for the crossbars and the four screws for the crossbar plate holders. And now all that's left to do is tighten down the final three mount screws to get it all hooked up. There's one, three. Also, if you're wondering, this is not a hammer drill, it, that's just the clutch set to the amount of torque that I thought was appropriate. So there we go, there is the rear belt drive mounts set up. Now we can go ahead and stick the motors on and get them screwed in. We've got five screws left from the Onsra kit and these are all for the uh, belt drive covers which are right here but uh, it looks like I will need to provide my own motor mounting screws, which is not a problem because I have plenty of screws. So let's go ahead and grab those motors. All right, so I've got my motors and I got my screws. I'm planning to use M3, sorry, M4 by eight for these, but I'm slightly concerned about the depth here. So we're gonna try and see what happens, but Hopefully they don't bottom out. Where's the Allen wrench? Also, I don't really put Loctite on these until after I've got them all set in place. So keep that in mind. I will be putting Loctite on in a moment. Let's see, are these bottoming out? I feel like they might be actually. This is a problem. <sighs> Man. Yeah, these screws are bottoming out. Dang, okay. Well, let's see if I can fit a washer in there. All right, so after thinking about this for a while, I'm switching these out to M4 by six screws, which is pretty short, but should still be long enough to get good thread engagement and not puncture the motor internals or uh, bottom out. So we're gonna stick those in and I'm not gonna lock tight them yet because we have no idea what the belt tension needs to be. So um, we'll just leave those out for now. So I'll leave this at maximum belt tension. And we'll just loosely, just hand tighten it down here to keep it in place while we do the other one. And there you go, we got two motors mounted up. Now I will need to figure out my rear axle situation. I think what I'm going to do is take the outer bearing, or the, the wheel nut, 
And you can see here that we have like almost no room to screw on uh, the wheel nut. And when I put in this bearing, which is oversized, you can see we have like three threads, which is not enough to get full engagement with a nut. So if we just thread this on, use the skate tool real quick to loosely tighten it. So that's just snug. Of course, the wheel's not gonna spin very well like that because the bearings are transferring axial load. You can see that there's a bit of a gap here. So basically what I'm going to do is just use blue Loctite and a regular nut um, to hold on the wheel nuts. And we'll see how that works. Hopefully they don't come off. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start by putting the tires on to the wheels. And these wheels are pretty easy to work with because they come apart into two pieces and you can slide the tire on pretty easily. So we're gonna do that. And then on this wheel, there's actually a section right here. There's a tiny bit wider for the stem to stick through. I just tried putting it through there to inflate it and it's kind of difficult. So we're just gonna have to see how that goes, but I'm gonna try and do it there for now. Um, and we'll just thread on the included adapter to see if I can kind of hold it in the right place <laughs> while we tighten down the wheel screws. And for this, we're gonna be using the shortest wheel screws, which are, what, like 35 mil? Forty millimeters, M4 by forty, and they thread into nuts that are captured on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the two front wheels, and then we'll do the back ones. There you go. There's one beefy, awesome looking tire. Man, I'm excited to ride these. I checked with uh, Sky at Power before to make sure that these would expand well. And he said that they should stretch well. And uh, wow, that is so cool. Now, this was pretty difficult, but it worked. So I'll let it fly, but you do lose a little bit of air when you unscrew this thing. So hopefully uh, I've got the right amount in there. I'll probably consider over inflating a little so it decreases to the correct pressure once I've uh, taken the thing off. I only inflated it to about 38 for this try. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that is awesome. All right, another front one to go. All right, so uh, a lot has happened with this since I last hit record. And the number one thing here is that all four axles have been changed. So this is not something that most people are going to be able to do, but I was able to acquire four 12 meter, millimeter axles that I have slotted into here. And these are going to be holding on the wheels that were going to be almost impossible to integrate with the old axles. So uh, that is one development and these are not Loctited in yet. Uh, the way these axles work is actually kind of interesting. The axle itself slides into the machined hole and then there's just a set screw that holds it in on this flat spot. Um, and this big part here is 12 millimeters with the small part being 10. So went ahead and switched it to the 12 millimeter straight axles. And now we're gonna be using big old 12 millimeter bearings, which go onto the axle. And then of course onto the wheel because 
These wheels have 28 millimeter bearing seats. So yeah, that has all changed. Um, that makes the axles a tiny bit longer on the back and uh, a decent bit longer on the front. So uh, this is no official recommendation to do this, even if you are able to figure out how, but that's how I'm going to be making this board work. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'm pretty stoked on that. The other thing is that I had to design pulleys <clears throat> to work with these wheels. Also, uh, I wanted a 69 tooth pulley because that's around a 4.3 gear ratio with a 16 tooth on the motor. Um, and also the red pulleys were gonna be too thick. And the bearing that was pressed into them is a 10, not a 12. So switched all that, designed a pulley, and now this pulley will go, oh, axles are a little bit tight, but it will go all the way on, sit there and align with that. So now I do need to buy some belts that are a lot longer. Um, the longest belt I have is a 380, I think. That was a 370. This is the longest one I have around and it barely fits around the pulley. So we're going to be getting some probably 420 or 430 belts uh, to fit on there. Still need to figure out that size, but that's the next step for that. So right now we're going to go ahead and assemble the rear drivetrain area and put the tires on the wheels, screw them all together, put the bearings in and mount them up. So let's get started. All right, so the way I designed these pulleys is that they bolt on to the wheel after the wheel is already assembled. So since we just assembled two wheels, I'm not gonna show you guys me assembling <laughs> the other two. So I'm gonna do those real quick and then we'll come back to put the pulleys on. All right, so I have gone ahead and assembled this wheel and the bearing seats on these impalers that I have are actually a little too loose. So the bearings literally just fall out. So I went ahead and used a touch of red Loctite on the inside of the bearing seat for the inner bearing to make sure that it doesn't come out. Um, and I'll probably use an even smaller touch on the outside. Kind of dumb, but it works and uh, it should stay in place because once you put the pulley on, there's a tiny gap between this plastic bit and the bearing. I don't want the bearing slopping around. So that is the solution for now. So now that I've got the bearing in there, I'm gonna go ahead and slide the pulley on. And then as you can see, we've got five more nuts that we'll need to go on with washers. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw those on now. These don't have to be horribly tight. They just need to snug the pulley on and make sure it stays in place. There shouldn't be much force going in this direction on the pulley. So there you go. Now I've got a pulley on a wheel with 12 millimeter bearings. So now we can go ahead and make sure we put in the spacer that comes with the newbie wheels, put it in the outer bearing and put it onto the rear truck. Uh, funnily enough, this uh, bearing is kind of stuck on here. I'm not really sure why, but not a huge deal. We'll just uh, press this straight onto it and that can go in just like that. The nice little press fit on there. And now we've got a pulley and a tire that is slightly off balance, but not too terrible. <laughs> so let's go ahead and stick on the spacer the bearing. Uh, it could be a little tough. We're just gonna put a spacer there so we can press this in properly. Then we're going to use a little bit of force. Oh, not big enough. Forgot 12 millimeter axles have bigger nuts on them. <laughs> Um, as you can maybe see, there's a little bit of a gap here between the end of the axle and the, um, I see what happened, between the end of the axle and the thread. So we're just going to put one of these handy spacers here, which is actually the inner race of a 12 mil bearing. 
and now we can put on the nut. Now there's not really a huge point in tightening this all the way because I'm going to need to take this off to put the belt on, but <laughs> might as well just get an idea for what it looks like. So there's one side, now we just got to do the other. All right, well, we have completed the assembly of the drivetrain, um, almost. The only things left are putting on the belts and um, I forgot to put the pulley on the motor on that side. And then we'll need to Loctite the pulleys down and make sure the axle securing set screws are also Loctited in there nice and tight. So we're pretty close. Um, in any case, I consider this a completed mechanical assembly because the drivetrain is here. And honestly, this thing looks awesome. These wheels on the black trucks with the, uh, the guards at the back here, really happy with how this looks. Um, the stance is nice and wide. I think this will be a really stable board. Um, and I'm interested to see how the different washer positions on the Onsra trucks will affect the ride. I also really like how the motor cables are coming in through here. I'll take some B-roll, but um, I think it looks super clean and I'm really excited to get the uh, carbon fiber enclosure mounted and get started on the battery. So the next video in the series will probably be building the battery. I think that's what I'm going to do next. And then um, after that, we'll do a complete assembly and then we'll be on the road. So yeah, I'm going to start a build thread for this on the Eastgate form uh, that's forum.eastgate.news uh, so you can check it out there and I'll leave that link in the description but for now hopefully you guys enjoyed this video it's probably longer than I intended but that seems to happen <laughs> so yeah hopefully you enjoyed it and if you did leave a comment down below are you excited for this build what things are you excited about I'm personally really excited for it because it's a new look and this build I intend to keep it the same <laughs> and just keep riding it so there you go. Stay safe, keep on riding, and peace out.